TE Connectivity welcomes you to Crimp Theory Fundamentals. At TE, we have been producing terminals and tooling to apply terminals for over 70 years. We know how to crimp a terminal to a wire. Our years of experience have shown that quality terminations cannot be produced without understanding what goes into making a good crimp. The untrained eye tends to oversimplify the crimping process. It is not as simple as pinching the terminal onto the end of a wire. The shape of the crimp and the amount of pressure applied must be correct in order to obtain the desired performance and durability of the connection. Improper crimps can generate heat due to a poor electrical connection and may result in rework of product, increased scrap, and in extreme cases, catastrophic failure. In this video, we will present the importance of making a quality termination and demonstrate the proper crimp termination process. You will build the knowledge and confidence to determine when a terminal has been applied correctly. Let's begin with the basics of crimp connections. A crimp connection is a permanent electrical connection between a wire consisting of one or more conductors or wire strands coupled with a crimp terminal in any form. A crimped terminal provides a way to transmit electrical current with a minimum loss of energy, providing a permanent connection and helping to ensure consistent electrical and mechanical performance. Crimped terminals help to create uniform, durable, and reproducible connections at high production rates. Quality terminations are created using a systems approach consisting of training, wire, terminal, tooling, documentation, and inspection. Overlooking any of these important process characteristics degrades the quality of the termination. The first component of a quality termination is quality trained personnel. You can use the best quality terminal, wire, and tooling, but if these components are not applied properly by someone trained to use the right tooling, as specified in the documentation, the resulting termination will not be a quality connection. With proper training, your personnel will have all of the information needed to produce a quality termination, inspect the result, and verify that it is conforming to all requirements. Your personnel must pay close attention to each of the six quality termination components as part of their training. Multiple training courses are available through TE. The second component of a quality termination is the wire. To create a quality connection, the wire must be the correct size, type, and must be prepared correctly. A wire is composed of several elements. The conductor is made of a conductive material, most commonly copper. Its form can consist of one solid strand or multiple strands wrapped together for flexibility. The insulation is a layer of non-conductive material that covers the conductor. The wire gauge refers to the size or diameter of the wire. The twist or lay of the wire refers to how much the strands wrap around themselves. The selected size of the wire is usually based on the expected power requirements. There are two common methods of identifying wire size, American wire gauge, abbreviated as AWG, and metric, which is measured in millimeters squared. The AWG numbering system is a retrograde measurement system. As the diameter of the wire gets smaller, the AWG number grows larger. The metric system of measurement represents the area of the conductor, and the value grows proportionately larger as the wire diameter increases. The circular mill area, or CMA, defines the cross-sectional area of a circular object or wire. We use the CMA to calculate the area of electrical conductors. The cross-sectional area determines the current carrying capability of a wire. To determine CMA for solid wire, the diameter of the wire, as measured in thousandths of an inch, is squared. The resulting number is the CMA for the wire. To calculate the CMA for a stranded wire, take the square of the diameter of an individual strand and multiply it by the number of strands. For maximum accuracy and to calculate the total CMA, each individual strand must be measured separately. Take the square of each measurement, then add the individual results together. 
The wire's insulation protects the conductor and insulates it from contact with other conductive surfaces or materials that could result in a short circuit. When selecting a terminal, you must take into account the thickness of the insulation. The insulation thickness can vary for a particular size of conductor due to application criteria such as voltage, temperature, or environmental requirements. The terminal insulation support must be appropriate for the outside diameter of the selected wire. Various wire insulation materials are used, such as PVC, nylon, or PTFE, to name a few. Preparation of the wire for terminal application is an important step in helping to provide a quality termination. The insulation must be cut and removed cleanly. Improper stripping of the insulation can result in a poor termination. The insulation material should not be torn away or cut at an angle. The cut lines should be clean and straight. The wire conductors should not be cut or scraped by the stripping process. Cut or nicked strands are not acceptable. An uneven or tapered insulation strip can result in the insulation penetrating into the wire barrel which reduces the contact area between the terminal and the wire, as well as reduce the current carrying capability. The proper preparation, size, and type of the wire is critical to a successful termination. Keep this in mind as we move forward to look at the third component of a quality termination, the terminal. The terminal is a device or contact attached to the end of a wire or cable or to an electrical apparatus for convenience in making connections. The terminal for your connection must have the necessary features to accept the wire and wire insulation. There are three major parts of a terminal. The wire barrel is crimped to the bare conductor of the wire and makes the electrical connection and most of the mechanical connection between the wire and the terminal. The insulation support is crimped around the wire insulation and provides strain relief for the wire. The contact end joins with a mating terminal or is attached to a terminal block. Depending on the design, some terminals may have additional features, such as stabilizers, which help to align the terminal within a connector housing. Terminals are available in many shapes and forms. Some common examples are open and closed barrel receptacle, ring tongue, tab, pin, and socket. Terminal materials are selected for the intended application. Common base materials are copper, brass, aluminum, nickel, bronze, and steel. As with the wire selection, the base material provides benefits such as increased conductivity, lightweight, high temperature capability, and moisture resistance. The terminals can also be plated with materials such as tin, nickel, silver, and gold to provide the desired electrical and corrosion resistance characteristics. A crimping tool is used to properly connect the terminal to the wire. There are various types of crimping tools that can be used for this process. A hand tool is suitable for low volume production, whereas the combination of an applicator and terminating unit, or a lead maker, provides for higher production rates. The crimping tool contains a crimper and an anvil. Let's walk through the crimping sequence to see how the wire is gathered into the terminal and then compressed into the final shape. The terminal is positioned on the anvil. The crimper starts closing toward the anvil. As the crimper comes in contact with the terminal, the wire is gathered together and the crimp barrel is rolled around the wire. As the crimper continues through the bottom of the crimp stroke, the terminal is compressed to the specified crimp height. This causes extrusion of the wire, breaking through any dirt and oxidation. A gas-tight connection between the terminal and the wire is created. When properly crimped, the wire barrel is rolled around the wire. All the individual wire strands are within the crimp barrel. All the wire strands are pressed tightly against one another with no cavities or spaces visible between them. An improper crimp can result from various reasons. Here, the crimp height is too high. And here, the wire is too small for the wire barrel. The insulation support crimper forms the terminal around the wire insulation, similar to the wire barrel crimp. When crimped, the insulation support should be snug but not so tight as to cut into the insulation. 
The insulation support moves the stress point of the wire back from the bare wire to the insulation. The support helps protect from breakage by increasing the radius of the bend and adding the strength of the insulation to the crimp. It is important to understand how crimping of the terminal affects the connection both mechanically and electrically. A tighter crimp is not necessarily a stronger crimp. Here we see how the mechanical strength increases as crimping force increases. This continues until a point at which the cross-sectional area is reduced so much that the mechanical connection becomes weaker. When looking at the electrical performance, we observe that, like the mechanical performance, as the crimping pressure increases, the electrical conductivity becomes continually better to a point. After this point, any further increase in pressure results in over-compression in the crimp area. The electrical conductivity will quickly drop off. When looking at the mechanical and electrical performance together, we see that the maximum mechanical strength and the maximum electrical conductivity occur at different points. TE designs the tooling to crimp each product within a crimp design range. This range identifies the best overall mechanical and electrical performance. Crimping the terminal to the correct crimp height, as specified by the terminal manufacturer, will enable the finished product to function as designed. Now that you understand the wire and terminal components of the process, we'll explore the importance of selecting the correct tooling, the fourth component of a quality termination. Using the proper tool is a key component to achieving a successful termination. TE offers a variety of tools that can be used to apply the terminal to the wire. Manual hand tools are suitable for producing small quantities and prototype work. Powered hand tools provide the capability to produce in higher volumes and to apply higher pressures required for large terminals. TE offers a variety of applicators for use with terminating machines. Terminals in strip form and mounted on a reel are required with this tool. The product is automatically fed into the crimping position by the applicator. The terminating machine can be either a benchtop semi-automatic machine or a fully automatic lead making machine. A fully automatic lead maker from TE offers increased production rates and accuracy over manual alternatives. It will feed the wire to the desired length, strip both ends, position the wire and terminal complete the crimping process, and stack the finished leads. Correctly matching the TE tooling and product to fit your application will help to assure a successful result. Next, we'll review the fifth component of quality terminations, the documentation requirements. A key component of a quality termination is the correct documentation. It provides the information needed to determine what characteristics indicate a quality termination. At TE, an applicator log sheet is shipped with each applicator. It contains an exploded view, parts list, and other information specific to the applicator. The log sheet provides key information about the applicator, such as the correct crimp height for each wire size, the insulation range, the wire strip length, and the part numbers of the terminals that can be processed with the applicator. Using this information helps assure that the tooling and terminals are compatible to create a quality crimp. The log sheet and other documents provide valuable information about how to properly measure crimp height and how to maintain your TE applicator. TE instruction sheet contains instructions that explain how to measure the terminal crimp height, the use of go, no-go gauges, and other measurement techniques. The applicator instruction sheet, provided with each new applicator, contains instructions about how to properly set up, adjust, and use the applicator. The terminal application specification contains information about how to apply the terminal. Important information, such as the inspection of the finished crimp, including strip length, wire size, and the recommended tooling, is indicated. Reading and applying the information provided in documentation will help you create quality terminations. Let's look at the final component of a quality termination, inspection. Once the terminal has been applied to the wire, the finished product needs to be inspected to verify that key characteristics comply with the application specification. 
The terminal application specification will contain information about the correct wire strip length and placement of the wire. When examining the finished crimp, first check for any damage to the terminal or the conductor as a result of the crimping process. Note any deformation such as bending, twisting, or crushing of any part of the terminal. The quality parameters can be found in the corresponding application specification. When inspecting the finished crimp, check the different facets of the termination to confirm that the crimp meets all of the visual requirements. The wire strands must be visible at the contact end of the wire barrel for maximum contact area between the wire and the terminal. The wire strands and insulation must be visible anywhere in the area between the wire barrel and the insulation support. This indicates that the insulation is all the way through the insulation support, but is not present in the wire barrel. There must be bell mouth visible at the wire end of the wire barrel. This prevents cracking and breaking of the wire strands. Both cutoff tabs must be visible, which indicates that the terminal has been correctly cut from the strip. The wire barrel must be uniform and the seam must be closed. There must be no wire strands outside of the crimp barrel or any strands trapped in the wire barrel seam. There must be minimal flash on the underside of the wire barrel. Excessive flash can be an indication of worn tooling. The terminal must be straight and there must be no damage to the body or contact area of the terminal. A supplier of finished lead assemblies should be able to provide documentation demonstrating conformance to all of these inspection requirements. The crimp height is a decisive quality characteristic of a crimp connection. It permits non-destructive testing and allows for continuous manufacturing control. TE has performed tests that show if a terminal is crimped to the specified crimp height with the correct tooling, and the wire is the correct size for the selected terminal. Then the electrical and mechanical performance will be within the required range. The crimp height is calculated and defined for every conductor cross-section and terminal. It can be measured with a crimp height micrometer. This is a micrometer specially designed for this purpose that has special tips for measuring terminal crimp height. The measurement takes place in the middle of the conductor crimp. The crimp height requirement for the terminal can be found in the tool parts list or applicator log sheet in the application specification for the terminal and sometimes on the data plate of the crimping tool. Some customers require pull force testing to validate a crimp connection. This destructive